We run a studio in Spain, and it's called Light Note Studio. Um, we design, at, as she said, many weird installations, most of them interactive. Uh, we have many different clients. Uh, some of them are now doing like a big uh, shopping center or mall, and we have tried to push some more interactive stuff in, in all the screen. You know, there are so many screens in the mall, and most of them are just playing videos or commercials, so we want to push some interaction there. Uh, in our studio, we have uh, three roles. Uh, the first one is try to, to have less time on the computer and more time taking beers with your friends. Uh, this is not cheap and easy, this take, take a long time. And the second rule is don't be a monkey, be a lion. So do, do not be afraid to any new project or any new, try to find the solution for any new project. Everything is possible. You need just time, friends, and less time for sleep, and that's all. <laughs> and the third uh, rule is enjoy your work all the time, as much as you can. And if you don't enjoy your job, you must quit and get out of there, travel, and find some solution, and then come back and start again and renew your stuff. So, um, um, before I'm going to tell you all the new stuff or widget or toys that I'm bringing, I'm going to I'm gonna put some video with the last few projects we did, uh, so you can see what kind of project we, we do. And this one was for Philip Morris. They want to present the new device for, no, for smoking and it's the, with no smoke. So they ask us to, make a, to build a big machine that can make a, a, a rain of bubbles, uh, but without the smoke, with, um, how do you say in English? Um, miss, like paper, no, like uh, ice, uh, dry ice, that's it. So we have three, only three weeks to redesign and make and try to, to make everything possible, and we did it. Uh, we have like, uh, we build uh, like 15 machines. These are the little machines. We call it Pomperos, that machine to make uh, bubbles. Um, so we synchronize all that in Top Designer so we can just uh, open any, any stepper motor or any other one to take the, um, the vapor or the smoke and to throw it outside. Um, the problem of that installation was the dry ice. You need to keep the, the, the white of the dry ice for like uh, 15 meters. So we did like a huge air conditioner to keep the, the temperature under 70 degrees. And this was another project in a mall in Almeria, and we, we used for that uh, um, this one of the toys I'm gonna show you today. Uh, it's a scanner, laser, laser scanner. And we, we tried to, to do touchable, a huge screen. It was like 14 meters by two. Uh, and it was a playground for, for kids. So they, they wanted to touch the screen, to throw some balls and do some more stuff to interact with, with the screen. So we have like that, that small device at the top, that are, that are the, the sensor. In, so we, we already know what is happening in front of the, of the screen. We have four of them. Uh, maybe we don't need four, but uh, we, we put four just to try to avoid the, um, the holes. I mean, if, if you have the sensor here and you put your hand there, all this side you are not going to see from the sensor. So we put another one 
to see from another view. And that this was outside, and we have a, a huge screen outside, and we put a circle in, on the square so that people can do some interactions, like jump, say hello, or, or move around, and the people, it will react to you. And we use for that um, three cameras. They are hiding over here, the three cameras. And we built an application uh, with a YOLO library. I don't know if you know what is about YOLO. It's a pedestrian tracking system. So we don't need Kinect, and we, we, need, we only need just a camera. And we can, we, we can scan or, or track something that is like 50 meters far away from, from the camera. And, and we, we implement optical flow inside, so we can get some, some more input. This was for the Real Madrid, the stadium, the main shop in the Santiago Bernabeu. And we also did it with the, with the same application. Uh, when you move in front of the main mirror, you move the, the video, the timeline of the video. The, 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 the application was so simple. You have just the video and you, you move the timeline. But the hardware behind to, to track everything was so complicated. This was another one, the uh, sensitive floor. And this was another one really nice uh, with the um, neuron, uh, how do you call it? Yeah, the neuron band. So you can control all the light from the, from the main building uh, with your mind. Uh, we have only uh, one day and a half to build and design and make this uh, ready. So, imagine the stress. <laughs> uh, this was for the Arco uh, exposition. We did in the main VIP uh, area uh, another installation where you can make like a Aurora Boreal uh, to you, 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 here, to, to animate the, the screen and everything. So what we have here, we have a new system that we built, and it's called Mami. Mami means mommy, so like your mother. And why it's called Mami? We always are working like this, joking and making funny stuff. We, we, we love to do like this. And it's called Mami because Mami is always helping you. It's always... Le, Try to make you everything easy. So that's what mommy does, exactly. Make you everything easy. We don't have, we have always the same problem in all projects. We don't have time. We are the last one and our result is what the client see. So we need to fix that, that little mm, short mm, and time problem. So we have mommy. And what is mommy? Well, we are going to talk about what and why we did it, the target, the architecture, the plugin we already designed and we are going to design in the future about what are we going to do with this. And we're going to ask for some questions for you. So what and why? As I said, uh, MAMI is a smart device that receives and proceeds to all incoming data receive it from our sensor, uh, deploy it on promise installation to our product at output equipment. Why mommy? As I said, and we have always time problem and we don't want to start again in a new installation. We want to reuse as much as we can. Um, the target. Um, we had some, some needings. Uh, not depend from a third-party modules to use sensor in, in TOS Designer. Before this, we have to use like Arduino, uh, implement some more li libraries, or talk to any other software in the middle. We always have problems, and we, we spend a lot of time to, to dealing with this. To separate the, the, the low-level tech, 
uh, to the high level tech. I mean, this machine, it will, it will do everything for me and it will send me just the clear data. That's all that I need. And after that, I will make my application in Toast Designer. That's all. To reuse uh, our work as much as possible, decrease our development and installation time, and find modular, extensible, and remote monitor solution. The architecture of this. Uh, we have the back end, the front end. We also are developing some nano device uh, that are connected to the main MAMI system. Uh, and these small devices are, I will explain later, but they are dealing with the small sensor, like a proximity sensor, accelerometer, or temperature, or any other one. And, and we can connect all the sensor plugin system also in like a full slave, full master, master and slave, so we can receive just one data with all the, the data inside or separate incoming data. This is more or less the architecture. We have the, the um, for example, the, just one mummy that is, well, it should be running in a computer uh, but we have all of them now rented, so I couldn't bring any one of them, and I had to install it in a Raspberry Pi 3, that it could be running also in a Raspberry Pi, so it's quite cheap. Um, it's not exactly the best uh, hardware for this, with this sensor, because you need to run a, lo a lot of uh, data, but it runs, it's okay. Um, so for example, we have this MAMI system and the front end that you are going to see in a bit, and the sensor, the sensor connected to this. But we could have, for example, another uh, radar to another mummy and send, like a slave, all the data to the master. And like this, we can keep going to the end. So, system backend. The task. Uh, we manage all the incoming HTTP requests and server frontend, all the security tasks. We manage all the sensor and collect the data. And as I say, integrate all the incoming data for external uh, and slate device, package everything, and send the OSC output streaming. Why OSC? It could be any other protocol. But OSC is, is common for many software like Unity, or Resolum, or MadMapper, of course, Toast Designer, or any other one. So we are, we are working already on uh, WebSocket, but at the moment we have uh, only OSC. So, um, and, keep, and of course, keep all the, de all the device and data synchronized. This is the system backing, more or less. Uh, we are running the engine's reverse proxy, and the gateway server is, is, is done in Node.js. Uh, behind this are all the sensors and the library, and package everything and send it through OSC. The front end is a graphical user interface for, for MAMI. It's a web um, server, so you can see from from your mobile, you can see from your computer, from everywhere. And allows to change every parameters in the device and manage every sensor connected and also to change the, the data and the connection structure and, and to set up the, the output for the OSC. This is how it looks like. Um, I will show you in a bit. And the application. So, for example, for, for this sensor, for the radar, we've got here like a preview uh, where we can easily uh, calibrate it, stop it, and, and start it. We also can toggle this mask so we don't get any value from, from outside our canvas. If, if for example, we, we define a one meter by 50 centimeter, we only get this value, uh, any value outside of there we, we really avoid it. Um, 
we can make an offset and everything. Um, I think I'm gonna stop here the presentation. I'm gonna try to start all the devices to, to just see what's going on. So what we have? This is the, the, um, the web that show all the application. And as you see, it, it can give you a host name, that is this name over here, and also can uh, make a Wi-Fi point. So you can connect it directly through, through your mobile to the device to synchronize or set up everything. You have the, um, the parameters for, for the IP, the port, and everything for this device. So I know this device is in this IP. And we have the preview with all parameters. And what we did, for example, for, for this sensor is to organize the offset, the position, the real position in millimeters, uh, X and Y. The size of the screen, for example, if we, if we have this screen, we, can, we, we know the size, we put it in the middle, and we, we make the relationship between them. And we can get also the values in millimeters or pixel, if we define the resolution of the screen. Um, and what is sending us? We, we, we've got the last two options. They can send like pure point value, that send heaps <laughs> values, and, and it can send also just the blobs. So you only take the value and you don't need to make anything inside the design. It's quite easy. And you don't spend any power of your computer. It, it, it makes everything for you. And we can set up the minimum blow side, the maximum blow side, the distance, the tracking speed, and all that kind of things. This is the bridge configuration for the master and slave. For example, if we have another slave, it will send um, to by OSC to my master. So I will put the incoming data and the outgoing data, outgoing data, and the IP for this nano device. So I will get also here the same value. So I can see now the radar and maybe the other nano device, package everything and send it through OSC. And the output configuration. Where, do you, where are you going? Which port? And if you need to read anything else, we allow another port. So we connect this. And we run it. Other side. So this is now running, and if I, for example, stop it, it will stop. Or we could run it again. So now I'm getting the, the um, all the blobs. Uh, and it's sending only these values. I'm not getting the, the blue point. It should be all the, the, the data that is coming. So a lot of points. And we already resume and, and make the blob and send only one value. And that's it. And it's running in a Raspberry Pi. So it should be quite faster in, in a computer. So how we get all the data in TOS Designer? Quite simple. We build um, this uh, module. Um, we only need to set up the port that is reading and, and just switch on. And that's all. And we get. For example, for, for this example, we get the X and Y in millimeters. But I could choose also the angle, uh, the position in pixels, 
and, and also the ID for the blob. So if, for example, I want to make an interaction with a new blob or something to avoid the last one to make a new stuff, we could do also. So, for example, if I lay this, So it's quite easy to, to, to make now everything for us. We, we don't need to program anything from, from the, any sensor. You just get the value, the X and Y, and make our programming in, in Top Designer, and that's all. Uh, this is another example. It's going a bit slow in the Raspberry Pi, but still working okay. So this is how the, the, main, the main application, the MAMI, is working. As you can see, it's so easy. And you can also, for example, uh, if I have something that is really, really cool for our installation, is you can manage the application also from your mobile. And it will be synchronized with the main one. So if I make any change on my mobile, I will see on my computer. And the other way, it will be the same. So for example, if I connect to the router, Show me the Wi-Fi. Yeah, it's here my line. So I don't know why I don't see. I don't know why I don't see the, the, the Wi-Fi from my router in my mobile, but it should be here. Yeah, it's now there. So if I if I if I connect my um, my device to the router and I and I write the 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 IP and the port, I can also see from here. And if I change any value, so you can see here the all the values, and you can see on the screen, for example, this value, it will change at the same time. So if I place, for example, here zero, it will be zero over there, and the same like that. So
So moving on, the nano device. These are pretty new. Uh, we used it like uh, two weeks ago for a gig. We have to make a, like a huge stand, but very thin. They are only two centimeters. And we need to get the value and the pressure from the people. And when the people um, st stand on, it will play a video or it will play some sound. And it will also change the light. The light. So um, we start from that and then we start to add it some more, some more sensor and a little device. The, um, the nano device are a small chip and chip device useful for manage some basic sensor and send data to the gateway, to the main mummy. So basically it's um, a microcontroller. I don't know if you know it, but it's a node MCU. If any one of you is using Arduino for any kind of installation, move on to this. Because it's Wi-Fi incorporated. And if you don't need so much pins, this one is the best solution. Uh, it's smaller and also cheaper. It's only five quid, so quite cheap. And this is what we have uh, inside this toy. This is the nano device, and we have here the, the nano device. And over there, we have a battery and an accelerometer. So this is ND, Wi-Fi wi data to the main mummy, and then send it back to, to my computer. So we can place this inside the anything or really far away from us without any cable or something. The architecture is quite simple. It's only the basic HTTP server, the sensor behind, and sending the, the OEC output data. Um, the sensor uh, plugin system is a daemon continuously listening the song specific input. It could be uh, USB, GPO, uh, etc. And when it detects the, the, that sensor, it will open a bridge, a uh, web server, and you can configure it quite easily and also send the data through. This is how the, the, the sensor demo works, like I said. And this should be like all the master and slave connection for everything. Um, we already have like three plugins, the RP LIDAR A3, the accelerometer, the other platform, and uh, real-time pedestrian tracking that we really I was talking to Ben yesterday, and I'm gonna pass him the, the, the main code. Uh, so they are gonna try to build an operator and implement this directly in TOS Designer. Because uh, to deal with, for example, Kinect is a, uh, sorry, but it's a big chip every time. If you're making an installation, for example, outside, you cannot use it Kinect. If you have someone very far away, you can use it Kinect. If you have more than six people, you cannot use it Kinect. So, no, Kinect is not the solution. So, what about this? Um, this is doing exactly the same. You only set up the, the port. We, only, we also allow the, the label if we want to, to read any specific device. Um, that's all. We we can now play, and we have all the values from the sensor directly through Wi-Fi. Easy and simple, darling. <laughs> we get the Yahoo pitch and roll data in Radiance, uh, the acceleration in X, Y, Z. Um, and also the quaternion for W, X, Y, and Z. And that's it. Mm -hmm. um, what about the future? We want to, as I say, we want to implement WebSocket, uh, MQTT, IoT orientation, and database. So we can, 
uh, store all the data that is coming from here to to an online database and after all our installation we have a result and we can show any statistic to, to the client. Because for example, it's not the same if you wanna sell an installation to your client and you say, okay, the people can jump and make um, something on the screen or the people can smile and, and, and move the screen. It's better if you say, okay, I'm gonna give you like a thousand smiles every month and every new month is gonna get bigger. It's another way to, say, to sell your stuff. So we, we want to keep all this database online and give all the report to the client. So that's it, that's all. Any question? Very, very cool. Guillaume. Hello. Uh, Hello. Thank you for your presentation. Lots of very interesting stuff in there. Thank um, you. First question is, yes, first question, I got two. Uh, what's the latency and the delay on the uh, 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 LiDAR that you were showing earlier? You were saying it was connected to uh, um, uh, Raspberry Pi, so that's yep. why it was a bit slower, but when it's connected to a proper computer, how fast does it go? Mm, it's like real time. <laughs> like real, 30 real frames time. a second, 60, 180, 960, real time uh, we are, we are running relative. 60. We are running 60 frames. 60, okay. Yeah, 60. And we can get, uh, we try for example, a uh, huge floor. Um, we did, I think I've got a picture, maybe. And while you're looking for that, how does it compare to a, a Velodine Puck, uh, the um, VPL 16 with 16 channels, which is, I know a 3D, because that, that's a 2D LiDAR, right? Yeah. So, uh, so how would it compare to a SIC, should I say? Because a SIC is basically the exact same thing. Um, but we, we, it's, it's a laser scanner, so, we, so you only have two planes, X and Y, mm -hmm. or X and Z, mm -hmm. it depends where you where you place it. Okay, but you've never so worked for example with we can put another one and and track uh, for example we can put this one on top of the screen mm -hmm. so we know what is going on on the screen. But if for example we want to know who is in front of the screen without touching, we can put another one on the floor and track the surface. Yeah, but I was talking about uh, well, I'll get into details with you afterwards. I don't think it'll be better. But just uh, the other question was the um, Arduino replacement that you were showing. Yeah. Uh, what's the name of it again? Node MCU. Okay. And how does that compare to like a Tinsy or a mm, Feather? We did a try with the Tinsy. We are going to try, but we didn't okay. at the moment. But we are more familiar with this one. Okay. We, we, we have been working with this one so, so much. I have a and bunch of other questions, but we'll... <laughs> look pretty nice, but we didn't try. Thank you. Thanks to you. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, I'm going to take the path of shortest path. Oops. Darling, ladies first. Okay, ladies first, you're right. Very right. <laughs> Hi, I was just wondering about your nano device. I think you said uh, it's power, uh, battery powered, yeah. and so you can put it anywhere and it's wireless. Um, what kind of power draw does it have, and um, how long does the battery last, or how do you maintain that in, say, in longer installations um, or permanent ones? You can, well, you, you can plug it directly through a cable, so you don't need the battery, but you can use any battery. For example, this one is like a mobile battery. So it will be running for like four days at least. But if you plug to anyone bigger, like that one that you use for your mobile when you're outside, it will take like a, a week or maybe a week and a half. So it depends the sensor. This kind of sensor, they don't consume a lot. And also the device, we can, we can sleep the device. 
So if, for example, it's not getting any value for like uh, five minutes, we can sleep all the, all the stuff and just leave one input. So as soon as you get the first input, it will wake up again and you don't spend so much battery. So why nice? Hi there. Um, are you selling these? And uh, mm -hmm. if not, will, when will it come online? I love that question. <laughs> uh, we are thinking about it. We, um, at the moment, we are renting it for some partner and some close friends because it's pretty new. As you can see, it's uh, version one uh, from Top Bananas. So, um, so we don't want to sell it right now, uh, but maybe in the future we will. Yeah, but we are thinking about what we sell, the, the system and the sensor, only the system, the system and the machine that is running this, the, the system. So we, are, we don't have much time to think about it. We are working so much <laughs> so, and drinking beers. So um, as soon as we take a break, we will think about it and we will see. But what will you do? You will buy? Sure. I, I mean, you're trying to figure out a simple solution to like a kind of a frustrating thing yep. that everybody's dealing with. So exactly. if you could implement like hundreds of these really quickly, then exactly. yeah, for sure. Exactly. That was the, the main idea to, to, to fix the time problem. Yeah, so uh, my question is, you're using it mainly through uh, wireless or also Ethernet cable? Because you're working mainly through the uh, UDP protocol or? But which one? The, the radar? Or because this well, one your is entire sending, system. this but one for example is, is sending not very much value. So no. it, could, it could be through OSC. Right. So like it's sending all this value. I, I think they are like eight, so it could be Wi-Fi. But for example, the other one is sending a lot of values. But and through cables or wireless? Uh, through cable. Because we use the wireless, cable. I was just wondering how is your experience uh, like in a live situation, mm -hmm. you know, Wi-Fi, how reliable is it really and how long does it stay up? Because you might um, lose your connection. We use stuff. our own Wi-Fi. We don't share the Wi-Fi. But even then, it doesn't matter because, like, if somebody else is on the same band, right? Mm, we didn't try this one with a close Spain full of people or mobile or that. But you've used it in your own installations, no? Yeah. And so far, it went well. At at the moment, oh. it, it goes pretty well. Good. Yeah. Oh, great. Andre. Hello. Uh, can your uh, can your device work uh, outdoor, or only inside the? Everywhere. Everywhere. Hmm. With the radar, we don't have limitation. For example, um, I wanted to show him the the one picture about the one gig we did, and we convert all this corridor interactive in like half days. We put four radar over here. One was placed in this corner, another, were, another one was placed in the other corner, and two on top of each screen. And this is 20 meters by three meters. Two walls and floor. So when the people walk around or touch the screen, everything moves. And this was inside. But we also did another one like this outside. So it doesn't matter. And also the, the, the nano device, if, if they have a really nice connection, uh, I can show you how is the configuration of this. Mm -hmm. 
So the, the nano device, um, they don't have like a, the main mummy. So they only open the HTTP server when they need it, you configure it, and that's all. So if I press the main button, it will make a, it will, it will open the a HTTP server and also um, allows a, a new Wi-Fi. So if I connect to my nano device, it's a bit slow because it's an, a really non, not a MSU and need to run for the first time a lot of things. It makes this uh, web, and you can see all the all the network that you have around. And you can, if you are allowed to use any of them, you can choose the best one. And if, for example, you you set up like three three network, it will get the best one. And if we lose it, it will get the new one and another one. So. You can, choose, you can choose many of them. For example, if I have the, the main router here, but another one there, if I move around over there, it will connect to that one. So if you are outside, you can put many, many, many router, and, and that's all. You connect through here. You put the password. Save it. and then close the application. So this blue light, when it, when it close and, and make all the settings, or update all the settings, <laughs> it will update the, the web. As I said, this, win this is really new, so we, we are already working on it. And now it's not working. So if I close the um, the web from here, it's all set up, and now and now I can start to to get the values, and that's all. Any more questions? Anybody else? Very Thank cool. you very much for for solving the problem of time. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>